Hello everyone and welcome to another News Kulam video. Now, um, this is uh, going to be a travel video, I guess, uh, a road trip video, uh, but it's a little different uh, than the ones that I normally do, right? So, uh, you know, we're sort of in the middle of, of this pandemic and there's shelter in place orders. Now, basically due to family needs, I, I still do have to travel. Uh, but for right now, I'm in Southern California. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know that I don't actually have charging at my apartment. So uh, I'm a pure Bolt EV owner, right? Uh, and so there's no gas backup generator, nothing like that. And I can't plug in at my apartment. And so typically down here, I would charge at work, but we're not working in the office right now. So, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones who gets to work from home. Um, but still that leaves me with a pure battery electric vehicle with no place to plug in at home. So uh, I kind of just wanted to show what I do as an EV owner who doesn't have access to home charging. This sort of f helps me form my fundamental outlook on the public charging infrastructure, EV adoption overall, because I know this tends to be a big uh, question mark for people. Well, what if I don't have uh, access to charging at home? And that can be a serious consideration for some people. And no, not all of the answers are in place yet, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of show what I do. And the other thing is too, I am gonna have to again, make another 500 mile trip uh, relatively soon and uh, so right now my battery is less than 50% charged uh, I arrived here with that I charged up extra on my last trip back and the Bolt EV has just been sitting here and that's one nice thing about the Chevy Bolt EV is the parasitic losses are almost nothing so you know my car can sit for weeks and weeks and weeks and I barely notice a blip in the available energy uh, that's consumed when it's just sitting here uh, in the parking garage. So, well, without further ado, uh, let's head out. So I'm at my local grocery store. Um, you know, this is just maybe a, a five minutes from my apartment. Now, when I left, uh, the EVgo charger, the app said that the chargers were unoccupied. But when I got here, literally two other electric vehicles pulled in at the same time, or they were basically just ahead of me. Uh, and this is one of those units, the EVgo units that only has two DC fast chargers. And one of the units is Chatamo only. Uh, and so there's also a level two charger. Now, under normal circumstances for a grocery stop, um, I would use the DC fast charger, uh, but you know, they got here first and actually in some ways it's maybe more appropriate because with everything that's going on, uh, there's basically a line out and around the side of the grocery store because they want to limit the number of people who go in. So my stop here just to get groceries and I have to run into Target to see if I can get some other items too, uh, it, it might actually take a couple of hours. So based on the statistics that I've seen, the average American spends about 45 minutes in a grocery store per week. And that's why for me, the preferred method if you don't have access to charging at home is to charge up when you go to a grocery store. Now clearly uh, that infrastructure isn't built out enough. In my opinion, every grocery store in America should have at least four DC fast chargers in the parking lot. Uh, and that gives that option to locals who can't charge at home to be able to charge up. Uh, basically you're there on a weekly basis, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes at most. You leave with essentially a week's worth of commuting. Uh, my work chargers went down for a week uh, and so I had no place to charge other than the public charging infrastructure. Even on a week when I was driving 600, 700 miles over the course of the week, I wasn't out of my way. And this is the point that I wanna emphasize is electric vehicles offer the opportunity uh, for sunk cost fueling. Whereas if you had a gas car, you have to make a discrete stop, you have to go to a gas station, spend five, 10, 15 minutes there typically once a week, and your only reason for going there is fueling up your vehicle. Where here, I'm gonna be able to do the shopping that I need to do, my car's gonna be charging the whole time, it's not costing me any additional time. So that's that sort of myth that I want to bust right now, right? Is that people with EVs waste time charging their vehicles. They don't. I 
am now going to exit my vehicle and I'm going to go do some shopping. Unfortunately, like I said, it could be an hour or more. So even this level two charger at only seven kilowatts is probably appropriate for the stop. And I might add 10% to my battery. I don't, it's not crucial that I DC fast charge right now. Under a normal stop, I would, uh, but in these circumstances, it actually would be, be inappropriate for me to be using a DC fast charger. So I'm gonna, you know, get my stuff ready, uh, get all geared up and uh, get ready to go out and go shopping. All right, so grocery shopping is accomplished. Uh, you know, I am finally navigated my way through the store. By the time I got back, everybody was uh, already vacated, so the uh, DC fast chargers have already sort of opened up, and that's exactly what I was trying to say, is, you know, those were smaller battery EVs. They're only gonna spend maybe 30 minutes charging on these 50 kilowatt chargers, but for a grocery stop in a larger battery EV, uh, 30 to 45 minutes on a DC fast charger makes a lot of sense. Like I said, a lot of people will add their weekly commute in that time. But then by comparison, this level two charger, you know, it looks like I added a little bit more than 10% to my battery. So only a fraction of what I would have added had I been using those DC fast chargers. But, uh, you know, still 10% isn't bad considering I wasn't really spending my time doing anything else. I was just going to the store to, to do some shopping, getting some of the things that I need, and even that was enough to you know add 25, 30 miles to my range. So uh, you know that's exactly the point that I'm trying to make here is that uh, EV owners don't need to waste their time charging, uh, even if they don't have charging at home. Uh, you're typically doing other things while you're doing it. And, EVgo themselves, I, I really would want to see them expand this site and uh, be a little bit, you know, more active about painting, painting the the parking spaces, uh, painting the stalls, replacing that Chatamo only unit uh, with a dual head unit so that you can service more vehicles at the same time. Had that been a dual port, both that eGolf and I could have been charging simultaneously. So uh, yeah, the, there's still some improvement that needs to happen. Like I said, grocery stores at this point, if they all had maybe four DC fast chargers, just 50 kilowatt units, just the cheaper ones that everybody's, you know, installing pretty, you know, pretty regularly at this point, uh, it would go a long way in assisting electric vehicle adoption. And while we're waiting for the interstate corridors to be built out, grocery stores with DC fast charging work as a really good alternative stop on trips. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope this, uh, you know, gave you a little bit more uh, insight into what it's like to, to own an EV, to, to live with an EV, especially if you don't have charging at home. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and uh, thank you for watching.